At 3.30, we number 10, Alabama. Can we explain to me real quick what Alabama has done to earn the ranking of 10? All they've done is beat Middle Tennessee State. I understand that you don't want to bump a team too far down for losing to a really good Texas team, right? But, like, even LSU lost to Florida State. Florida State's 3, Texas is 4. LSU's all the way back at number 14. And LSU arguably outplayed FSU for a half. Alabama looked like the inferior team for both halves <laughs> Texas looked like the better team I don't think Bama should be 10 I think honestly you kicked out Tennessee for playing a close game against Austin PA Alabama lost T T Tennessee won <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it I don't get it I don't think a, after two weeks a one loss team should be in the top 10 but it's Alabama they're going to give them the benefit of the doubt regardless apparently um they're going to travel to USF, who's 1-1 one one also. Alabama favorite 33 points on ABC. Jalen Milrow has gone 27-45, thrown for 449 yards, five touchdowns, two interceptions, and in really interesting news that I got this morning, he might not be the quarterback next, this week against USF. That might be Drew Pine. And once you switch quarterbacks, ooh, that's a rough one, especially considering that was a Notre Dame guy that Notre Dame didn't want anymore. I mean, that's not a Notre Dame team that was – oozing great quarterback play last year and was just like oh it wasn't like ohio state where they had haskins and burrow and they had to make a choice they had pine and no one else and they were like yeah you can leave pine i mean that's not a great sign for alabama especially considering bill rose your leading rusher he's had 22 carries for 92 yards and two touchdowns not only is he but he's playing not i don't even hate milrow i don't think he's that bad of a quarterback it's the fact that alabama went from you know, Jalen Hurts to Tua Tagovailoa to Mac Jones to Bryce Young. You've been spoiled by insanely great quarterback play. That just doesn't happen all the time. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. And Jalen Milrow hasn't been playing bad. He's been playing Mac Jones level football, which led you to a championship not that long ago. But the thing is between Mac Jones and Jalen Milrow is Mac Jones had a championship roster that he quarterbacked. This is in a championship roster. Jermaine Burton's their leading receiver. He has five catches for 120 yards and two touchdowns. No, like, when I said at the beginning of the year, that was the big thing I was worrying about in Alabama, right? Last year, they didn't have a great receiving core. And what covered that, what masked that, was Bryce Young's insane, right? Bryce Young will scramble around in the pocket. He'll take forever. And then he'll just find a guy who will eventually get open. Jalen Milrow is not Bryce Young. He's made some nice plays. But he's not Bryce Young. Bryce Young went number one overall for a reason. Milrow's not going to do that. Milrow is a solid enough quarterback. He's a game manager. He can manage the game for you if you give him open targets. The thing is, he's not getting open targets. His receivers aren't getting open. This isn't entirely on Milrow. Milrow's just not Bryce Young. Bryce Young's crazy. Two is crazy. Jalen Hurts, he's crazy. Good, right? All these guys, first round picks, they're stars in the NFL. Even Mac Jones is a star, is somewhat is a starting level quarterback in the NFL. Bama doesn't have that right now, and they don't have. And then the crazy thing about Tua and Hurts and Mac Jones and Bryce Young is outside of Bryce Young's last year, is they had legitimate threats at wide receiver. Whether you're talking about Jerry Judy or Jalen Waddle or Henry Ruggs, there was a lot of threats at wide receiver. Henry Ruggs turned out to be more than a threat, but he. These were insanely great wide receivers that they just had. They just had these guys that they could sling the ball to. They don't have those guys anymore. Don't know how they didn't recruit well enough, but Jermaine Burton is nowhere near the talent level of any of those guys. That's the problem Alabama's having right now. They should roll over USF, though. I should talk about USF a little bit. Byron Brown is their leading passer. He's actually looked pretty good through two games. Also, I had to give Western Kentucky a decent fight. He's looked like the best quarterback they've had since Quentin Flowers, which is a compliment. Quentin Flowers was a really good quarterback for that football team. He's gone 35-68, going for 363 yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions. He's also led his team on the ground with 42 carries for 183 yards and four touchdowns. He's been as dynamic on the ground as anyone in the American Conference, period. Coffrey Brown has had six catches for 109 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Bama's 1-0 against USF all time. They played in 2003. The year of my birth, actually. Um, then Alabama won that one pretty handily, 40-17. to It was obviously in Tuscaloosa. This one's actually going to be in Tampa. So that's at least interesting there. Um, again, this is a rough early window. This one's on ABC. It's just like... 
it's just rough, right? Like, if the CBS and ABC games are both 25 plus point spreads, and it doesn't get super better from there. There's a couple games that are one possession that I'll point out, and I think could be good watches if you want to watch one, but this USF team should get crushed. This is a tune-up game for Bama entering actual SEC play, um, and you're going to have to win out if you have any shot at the playoffs if you're Bama. Give me Bama to win and cover the 33-point spread on the road.